But if you go to Derek Abbott's website, and there's a link to it on our own word of mouth website if you're interested, you'll discover that animals in foreign countries make some very foreign sounding noises. Same animal, different sound. Derek's in Adelaide, Australia, but I can talk to him by satellite. Good day. Good day to you, mate. Uh, can I ask you first, uh, how did you come to study this subject? I guess uh, the curiosity started when I was a kid. But uh, being a scientist, I go around the world uh, quite frequently, going to different conferences and visiting different universities around the world. That's part of my job. So while I'm at a conference uh, at some random location in the world, like, um, for example, the Canary Islands in Spain or Budapest in Hungary or something like that, I bore everyone to tears in the tea breaks by buttonholing them, grabbing them, and sitting them down, and getting my list of animal noises out and saying, hey, how do you say this in your language? I can remember when I did um, O-level French, as it's called here, they were very particular about teaching us that um, a duck in France makes a sound coin, coin, which they spell C-O-I-N, which also happens to mean a, a corner, which is slightly odd, really, because the idea that ducks go about saying corner, corner, but um, <laughs> there, there must be a lot of variation between languages, wasn't there? Uh, yes, there is indeed. And it's fascinating to see which animals there are where there isn't much variation and which animals there are where there's a lot of variation. For example, the duck one is pretty uniform. So what does uh, an Italian duck say, for example? Well, it would be very similar, and it's in fact qua qua. But um, one where you'd get a quite a different sound would be the Japanese one, where they use a G sound, so it's actually gaga. <laughs> the only one that doesn't really sound like um, a duck uh, to our English ears would be the Danish one for a duck, which is rap rap. Can I just try that? Can I just see, have a go with that one? Rap yeah. rap. Well, it's not bad, you know. I guess it's not too bad, is it? Yes. And and you see cock-a-doodle-doo for the rooster ah. or the um, male uh, chicken, the cock, is pretty uniform across all languages. I mean, there's variation, but it all sounds fairly cock a doodle dooey. But then there are other interesting anomalous cases. There, there are cases where we have something in English and it seems very obvious to us, Whereas in other languages, they don't seem to have anything. Uh, when I go and ask them about such a sound, I get blank looks on people's faces. And a good example would be when we have bird sounds, we say cheep, cheep, or chirp for a little tiny bird. For a slightly bigger bird, we might say tweet. And for a big bird, we would say squawk. But then when I go around the world and talk to people of different languages and, and say to them, what do you say for squawk, folks? They have no problem with the cheap cheap and the tweet tweet. They have their equivalents for that. But when it comes to squawk, I get this blank look and the sudden silence on their faces and they have no clue. All oh, right, well, we're going to put out a search for that then. So a world search. We need a world search for squawk. So, Derek, uh, just run us around um, the familiar farmyard animals we know, um, cows, sheep. Well, so cows, uh, cows lowing. Interestingly, it all begins with an M in all the other languages. The only language I couldn't find it beginning with an M was Urdu, which is spoken in Pakistan, of course, and they begin it with a B. They say bear, B-A-E-H. My pronunciation ah. might not be so mm. good there. But all the others in other languages are all the fairly familiar M sound, like M and Mu and Mau Mau in Japanese. The Finnish have a slightly different variant. They put an A on the front for some reason. They say Amu. Can I just try that for a moment? Yep. Um, uh, no, it doesn't really work, does it? Yeah, you have to be Finnish. And how about um, sheep? Uh, Baba -ba black sheep, yes. What have we got? I was hoping in my naivety the sheep would always begin with a B. Yeah. But it seems to be an even mix. Uh, there's some countries, 50% of the countries actually have the sound beginning with an M for the sheep. We have sounds like meh and be, be and ba and ma and be and me, me and me. We're all in the various languages. What about the pig? Now, we've got sort of a variety of those. We've got grunt, grunt and oink, oink in English, haven't we? I've actually split pig into two categories. I've got pig grunting and pig squealing. The grunt is the oink, 
And for the squealing, I put wee wee, as in the um, nursery rhyme when the little pig went wee 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 all the way home. Yes. And so we have the wee wee sound and the oink sound in different languages. For example, in uh, German, the oink would be grunz. Grunz. Whereas the squeaking sound would be kvik. Kvik, kvik. Yes. I quite like a German piglet. (laughs) And in Hungarian, the oinking would be ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff. Yes. And the squealing would be wee, wee. I should mention what my favourite sound of all languages is, uh, talking of the Hungarians. And I think the Hungarians have got it really good for, the, for pigeons and doves. In English, we would say coo. And in other languages, for example, Finnish, they say cur. It's all fairly hard sounds, but uh, for for the Hungarian one, it's really beautiful. It's Buruk Buruk. Isn't that gorgeous? Buruk Buruk. Buruk Buruk. Very convincing. What do bees do? Have you kept Ah, up with bees? Okay, yes, bees are very interesting. They're almost universally a buzzy or a bzzz sound. Yes. The ones that are a bit strange are the Japanese one. It's spelt here B. Double O N, boon boon. And in Turkish, uh, they do it with a V sound, so it's like more like viz, viz. Oh, that might be an improvement, actually. Let me just try that. <laughs> I'm going with the Turkish bees. I like them. Thank you very much, Derek Abbott. And next week on Word of Mouth, I'll be talking to a man who collects ghoulie chits. Bye. <laughs>